In this video, I'll take you through some of the basics for using Apple's iMovie. To make a movie, you'll need to know how to import your files, edit your materials, and share your project in its finished format. First, let's get you familiar with iMovie's interface. To your bottom left is the event library, which houses all your previous media imports as events. If you select an event, it appears in your event viewer to the right. In the Event Viewer, you can highlight anything you'd like to use in your video and drag it to the project library for editing. Simply hover over something you'd like to use, then drag your mouse to create these yellow brackets, and then click and hold to drag the clip up for further editing, like so. To your right, you'll see the Preview pane. If you press the spacebar on top of the video, the Preview window will show what your video looks like to this point. Although the interface is fairly intuitive for iMovie, you should take a moment to familiarize yourself with it if this is your first time. To start a new project, simply click File, then New Project. From here, you will see Project Themes and Movie Trailers. If you select a project theme, you will already have things like transitions and effects built into your project, and you can see a preview of that to the right. Movie Trailers is a similar option, but it is a bit more cinematic and also has sound. For now, let's select No Theme. On the right hand side, you can name your project. Below where you name your project, click Create to start your new project. Now, let's look at how to import still images to iMovie. This process is very simple. First, you can click this camera icon, which will pull up all of your iPhoto images. You can simply drag and drop these images to the project library, like so. Also, Provided they are in the correct format, you can drag and drop pictures from any other location on your computer, such as the desktop. There are two editing tools you'll need to know to edit your still images. The first is the Inspector tool, shown as a small eye. Simply select the image you want to edit, go to your Inspector tool, and you can change things like the duration, and you can also edit effects to your image. One more thing to notice. If you preview a still image, you'll notice this panning motion in your preview pane. This is called the Ken Burns effect, named after Ken Burns, obviously, and it is set by default to work in iMovie. To edit, simply select the cropping tool. You can imagine these green and red boxes as your camera lens and the line connecting them as the cameraman moving the lens from one point to another. You can adjust them to edit the pan effect. If you want to remove the Ken Burns effect altogether, click the Fit button. Also, you can click the Crop button to focus on only a specific part of the image, like so. Next, let's go over how to import and edit video. You'll want to know about two ways to import videos, from a camera and directly from your computer. To import from a camera, click File, then Import from Camera. If you'd have a device such as a flip cam or a digital camera hooked up to your computer, you can select those files using this option. To import a file from your computer, click File and then hover over Import. Select the Movie option and you can then select whatever file you'd like to import, such as files from your desktop. With either option, you will have to wait for iMovie to process your import for the event viewer. The larger the file, the longer this process will take. You have several options for editing video in iMovie, so I'll just show you some of the basic ones here. First, you can select the video clip, press Ctrl on your keyboard, and then click. In the drop-down menu, you can select things such as Split Clip, which will divide the video into different parts. This is useful if you want to add transitions or effects to the video. You can also select Detach Audio, which will then display the audio from that video as a separate layer. This option is helpful if you want to edit the audio already embedded in a video, or if you want to delete it altogether. You can also highlight parts of the video you no longer want to use in the project and press delete on your keyboard to get rid of them. Like still images, you can also use the cropping and Ken Burns effects, though Ken Burns will not be activated by default with videos. If you select the Inspector tool, you can change the length of the video, as well as add effects to the video or audio. If you want to use slow motion or fast motion, you can change the speed of the clip with this option. One very useful tool is this area marked with smooth clip motion. If you have recorded live video and you, like me, don't have the steadiest hand while filming, click this box. 
This will stabilize your video automatically, removing any unwanted shakes or wobbles in your video. You also have a few options for importing and editing audio in iMovie. First, you can click the iTunes logo here, and any audio files you have in iTunes will appear. You can drag and drop these files into your project, choosing to either apply the audio to the entire project, which will highlight it in green, or you can add to a particular part of the video, which will display the audio as a green layer. Like images, you can also drag and drop audio files from your desktop or other locations on your computer, provided they are in the correct format. Additionally, if you click the microphone button here, you can record voiceovers to your video files. You can select what type of input you want, and you can also change the volume at which it will record. To start recording, just click the clip you want to add voiceover to and begin recording. To edit audio, click here on your audio layer. You can change the volume of the audio, add ducking effects, this changes the volume of the audio layer with respect to any other audio you have playing, and you can add fades. There's no real magic way to get your audio right. Play around with a few of these options and listen to how they sound using your preview pane. Once you have all your videos and images, you can start adding titles, transitions, and captions. For titles and captions, click this T logo. Simply grab the text option you want and drag and drop it. Once there, you can change the duration using your inspector tool like an image. You can also click the text layer and then type in your title. To change font size or style, click Show Fonts and your font menu appears. Captions work the same as titles. Just click the option you want and drag it to the image where you want a caption. You can get to transitions using the icon next to titles and captions. Again, just select the option you want and place it between media in your project file. Once the transition is there, you can double click it to change its duration or apply the same effect to all transitions. Once you have a completed project in your project library, the video is still not quite finished. Though you can play your entire video in your preview pane, this is not a video. Basically, it's just a series of links to files on your computer, so if you tried to take this file to a different computer, it wouldn't work. If you want to share your video, click Share and then Export Movie. You can select the file size you want. In most cases, medium or large will be your best bet. Name your file and select Export. Again, the more stuff you have in your video, the longer this rendering process will take. Exporting your video renders it as a finished file, which you can then burn to a disk, upload to YouTube, or even email if the file size is small enough. 